Hello, members, one and all of the Salivation Nation. The psychology of buying high and selling low. That's right. When we buy our precious metals, have you ever noticed that there's a tendency to want to buy when precious metals are going up in price because you're afraid you're going to miss out if the prices keep climbing? Or there's a tendency to sell when the precious metals start to dip because you're scared that they're going to fall even more. And that's sort of the psychology that plays in our minds. And for many of us, if we're really honest with ourselves, uh, we find that temptation to hold true. I'll give you an example for me personally. Uh, back when gold was at $300 an ounce and even lower, there was a time where I thought, well, you know what? Maybe I should not be buying right now because you know, it's probably going to go down even lower or may remain the same. And there's probably other things I could spend my money on. And this precious metal, gold, really is not uh, worth all that much. And it may not climb up. So there's only no need to get more. In fact, maybe I should sell some of my gold because, well, it just doesn't have the luster that it once had. And then the same is true when the prices go up. You think to yourself, okay, well, the prices are climbing now and I should probably start buying more uh, because the prices are just going to keep going up. And I can't tell you how many times on my channel, which I've, I'm in my fifth year now posting videos on YouTube on the very number of comments uh, uh, from folks predicting that when the prices are going up, that uh, they're, they're predicting ridiculously higher prices in some cases. And in other cases, when the prices go down, uh, there are some predictions of the price being ridiculously low by the end of a certain year or another. And I've posted videos on some of those commentaries uh, from so-called professionals that make these predictions. And it's fun to explore and discuss and talk about. Uh, but there's a lot of psychology behind that sort of thing. People buying and selling at certain points um, to based, based on you know certain resistance or patterns in the pricing. And when they go up, people tend to get excited and buy more. And I've lived through certain periods and times when these precious metals have made moves in one direction or another. But by and large, if you look at the long-term charts for gold and silver, they the prices tend to have uh, been right in line with inflation. So in other words, you know, uh, as a general rule, the price for one ounce of silver or one ounce of gold is pretty close to the value of what it was you know, 20, 30, uh, 40 years ago, really, when you look at the whole long-term scope of things uh, based off what the value of the dollar was in those days as compared to what it is now. So it's quite interesting and fascinating indeed to see how psychology plays a role. And so the point of this video is to bring that to light, you know, because we kind of work against what we're told to buy low and sell high uh, when we get involved in precious metals and especially for those new and we've seen it with cryptocurrencies as well people are saying well it's going to the moon you might want to get in now because if you don't you're going to lose out and it could go back you know to uh to another point to where you're not going to be able to make any money because you're going to reach the high or whatever or the low and so people have a tendency to buy it when there's a lot of buzz about any particular commodity or anything and but with precious metals that's not the approach i feel that people should take my my view is that we buy and sell these precious metals when we need to 
or when uh, we, um, with the attitude that we are protecting ourselves um, from economic instability. And by the way, economic instability doesn't just mean hyperinflation. It could be massive deflation as well. And so my view is, is to buy steady. In other words, if uh, in an extreme example, not that this would happen, but let's say that uh, gold and silver was to lose half its value just for the sake of easy math, well, I'd be able to buy twice as much at a particular period of time. Or lay, let's say that it doubles in price. Uh, then I'll be able to buy half as much. And my feeling is that you're protecting yourselves. It's an insurance policy. I don't look at it as a, uh, an investment. I look at it as an insurance and an, a savings policy. You know, uh, Greg Manorino and others have mentioned that to be your own central bank, especially with in terms of gold, and so every tenth ounce, every half ounce, every quarter ounce, or every ounce that you get of gold, you are just uh, strengthening your position as your own central bank. Very, very nice indeed. And it's beautiful to look at. It is the one uh, type of, uh, of hedge or uh, preservation of wealth to invest in yourself as an insurance policy that you can hold, touch, feel, and appreciate its beauty. Yes, indeed. And so resist the urge. It's still there to this day, as long as I've been stacking the urge to buy high and sell low. Well, I'm not a seller, so selling low is kind of a, uh, is, is not really applicable to me. But at the same time, it, that kind of attitude can persist. It can persist in the fact that if gold were to drop a price, you know, this thing here, this one ounce gold, it may not treasure it as much as I would if it were worth $2,000 as opposed to $1,000. Like, okay, well, it's in my hand, but it's just not, it's not worth as much. The value, you have to think beyond uh, the dollar sign when it comes to gold and silver and the precious metals. One ounce of gold is quite a feat to, to, uh, to acquire and obtain, even if it were $300 an ounce, because the true value, I think, is not been realized yet. And even to this day, even gold being priced where it is today, I don't really think it's really been fully realized. The same thing for silver. These pieces, you know, each time we hold one of these in our hand, we have empowered ourselves and uh, holding it and owning it and acquiring it uh, when you can. Using fiscal responsibility is the best way because when you realize that when you acquire silver and gold, you have, uh, are preserving your wealth, uh, then it just, it just uh, it surpasses the, the impulse and to have to think in terms of, of selling or buying. Because if you get into the habit of accumulating through your life these precious metals to uh, broaden your, your collection and your stack, uh, then, and you think about it in that term, then you don't have to worry about playing the market game, so to speak. You know, it's about a continual process. It's about a growth. It's about savings. It's about um, more than just uh, what is it from day to day. And of course, those familiar with my channel, we know we talk about those issues. We talk about the markets and what happens from day to day. It's interesting. It's fascinating to see where things go, the psychology of it all, the uh, geopolitics involved. But really, when it's all said and done, uh, an ounce in your hand today, as opposed to 20 or 30 years ago, is still an ounce in your hand. It, it speaks volumes. And it speaks so loud that it's beyond the stock market. It is beyond the commodities, the futures trades. It's beyond anything than what it truly is. It's a thing of substance. It's a thing of weight. It's a thing of value that has surpassed this present age indeed. Silver and gold, thousands of years of history that backs it up. What can you say about any other uh, commodity or any other method of exchange, or any other empire, or any other epoch. 
gold and silver have surpassed it all. Gold and silver, buy it at any time, whether it's low or whether it's high. Gold and silver, hold on until you need to sell. Or if you do sell to make a profit on a certain type of piece, well, that's fine too. You know, if you can make money off of gold and silver, by all means do so. But resist the urge to, um, to buy high and sell low. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to y'all for watching and encourage you to please rate, comment, and subscribe.